Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the concept charge sharing. Now, charge sharing is a concept which occurs in dynamic circuits. We'll understand how and in few seconds or in few minutes, we'll understand what is charge sharing going to do to our overall circuit. So by now everyone knows how to draw a 3 input dynamic NAND. Let's quickly draw that and let's quickly evaluate what's going to happen. Very similar to what we do in static NAND, just write the expression y equal to a dot b dot c the whole bar. The pull down is going to be the same a dot b dot c. We'll put a footer transistor, we'll put a header transistor and this will be connected with nothing but phi. There's nothing but my a, b, c. Remember this is my v out, this is my vdd. This will have some capacitance say c out. This will have some internal capacitance, let's call it C1. This will also have something which is called as C2. This will also have something which is C3. And there's nothing but my ground. Now what's going to happen is when phi is equal to zero, my PMOS transistor is on and my V out is charged to VDD. At that point of time, any change in A, B or C or the, any of the inputs will not be evaluated because we are in the free charge phase. So at this point of time, if I have to tell or if I have to ask what is my total charge on my system, or on my circuit you will say q equal to nothing but given by cv here because it's an output capacitance which is given by c out and it's getting charged to vdd the initial charge on my system is nothing but c out into vdd let's call this expression one for the time being now what we are going to do is we'll make our phi equal to one that means my pmos is off and now i enter the evaluate phase means whatever changes happen at the input will be reflected i make my a1 p1 and my c0 from the truth table of NAND, we know that if A is 1, B is 1 and C is 0, my output has to be equal to logic high. It would be to logic high because there's no part to ground because this transistor is off. But what's going to happen at this point of time is because this is on and this is on, it translates to a circuit where there's a tank of water. One is having high level, other one is having low level of water and both of them are connected with a pipe. What's going to happen is the water will flow from higher level to lower level till the time that both of the waters are equal and also very important water in the high level of tank will go down, water in the low level tank will go high and they will both try to balance it out and make it equal. Similarly in electronics what's going to happen is because my output was initially charged to VDD and now A is 1 so this transistor N1 is on, 1 feet of NMOS is connected to VDD and other is connected to ground and both of them have capacitance. In short, this is electronically closed switch which has one potential VDD and assuming that the initial voltage across C1 initially was zero and across V2 is also zero and now B is also closed because B is also one. So it turns down to the water tank, let's call this as tank A and tank B which are both connected electronically or through pipe with a master tank or nothing but my output. So what's going to happen is this tank is having a lot of water. This tank initially had no water, no water. Now the water will start flowing here, here till all three of them will have the same level of water. So what can I say? My final voltage on my system or V out will be nothing but VF which will be equal to V out which will be equal to the voltage at V1 which will be equal to voltage at V2. This is off so this is not there in the circuit at all C but this two are on similar to A and B tanks and from the master tank they will draw water till the time all of them have the same level of water. So master tank will go down in water so V out which now becomes Vf might get reduced we'll see how and A and B tanks will rise in water. So this is my voltage now and if I have to ask you what is the charge on my system at this point of time you would say that now the charge on my system is nothing but Q final is equal to C out into VF the output voltage which was initial C out into VDD we wrote it initially V out now V out has become VF plus because A was also on it will have its capacitance charge to VF as well so this is nothing but Q uh, C1 VF plus C2 is also on and its capacitance is also charged to a voltage equal to Vf. So this is my final voltage and my initial voltage was nothing but C out into VDD. We know from the law that charge cannot be created or destroyed and final charge has to be equal to initial charge. So we'll just be evaluating both these equations. 
it is nothing but c out vdd equal to vf i'll take it common c out plus c1 plus c2 this tells me that final voltage vf will be equal to c out vdd or i'll put it in better words c out upon c out plus c1 plus c2 now we know that c1 plus c2 plus c out will surely be greater than c out and hence my output voltage the final output voltage would be less than vdd this is nothing but the concept of charge sharing which happens when the transistors are on and tends to take your output node voltage to a lower value if it was initially charged to a perfect logic value high because of which if this value is far less than 0.9 if i'm considering a scale of 0 to 1.8 then it might be interpreted as a wrong logic value or it will be interpreted as logic zero. So we have to ensure that it stays above 0.9 or in simple language, we have to ensure that C1 plus C2 is far, far, far less than C out. If that happens, my final voltage will be nearly equal to VDD. I hope you have understood the concept of charge sharing. Thank you so much and stay tuned.